Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Men, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, we have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you, you, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We pray that you open our minds and our hearts as we listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, as you know, it's the fourth week and it's the last Sunday of our series that is living as disciples. Because for the past Sundays, we've been talking about what it means to live as a disciple what it means to live as a child of God. And as you know, this theme covers, you know, the theme of, or, or this series covered, covers the theme of PMC, which is we are building the community of God. So what we're saying for this past Sunday is, how do we build a community of God? By living as disciples. And if you remember, just to refresh your memory, but I know you still know, that the first Sunday we spoke about what it means to be a neighbor or how to be a good neighbor, where we share the story of a man from Jericho to Jerusalem when he was mugged on his way, and then a priest came along, and the priest was too busy to attend to him, passed by, a Levite came, and then a good Samaritan came and rescued him. And that's what we're talking about, that being a good neighbor means being a good Samaritan. And after that, if you remember, then Jesus was invited to Mary and Martha's house, and then there as he was with them, and one of the sisters was complaining, Martha saying, but Jesus, I'm here attending to you. But Mary is lazy sitting. And then Jesus reminded her that the most important thing is to be at the feet of Jesus. That was the second week. And if you remember the third week, we spoke about when the disciples saw Jesus praying, and then he was coming back. They said to him, teacher, teach us to pray just like the disciples of John. And then he teach them the Lord's Prayer. Where in the Lord's Prayer, as it went along, we were told to ask and knock at the door. And the door will be open for us. Now, it's the fourth week and the last Sunday of our series. And today, we encounter a story. Because what is happening in Luke chapter 12, or from Luke, after Jesus taught the disciples to pray, then he started warning them about things that are happening in life. So going from there up to Luke, up to Luke chapter 12, Jesus is busy teaching them, encouraging them, telling them things about life, what to expect, and all of that. And in the midst of that crowd, imagine this. You're busy telling people about something else, and then someone disturbs you and says, I hear what you're saying about life, but all I want is my brother to share the inheritance with me. So Jesus is responding to a question that is asked by a man who wanted his brother to share inheritance with him. And then Jesus shares a parable of a rich fool. Now, friends, I've had so many sermons on this parable, and it's so sad that mostly the sermons on this parable make people who are wealthy to feel bad, or people who have more to feel bad. And this parable is not about that. What Jesus is teaching here, which is what I want to focus on today, is guard against greed and focus in knowing who God is. So there are two things he's addressing here, is guard against greed and focus on knowing who God is or be rich towards God. Right? So that's what is happening in this story because this man wanted to, wanted, all he wanted was his brother to share with him. And what I want to ask you today, I don't want you to respond, but think about it. If I was rich, which I will never be, but I'm rich in Christ, <laughs> if I was wealthy and come to you and say to you, I'm going to give you a million rands, one million, what would you do about it? 
I'm sure you'll go on trip overseas or go to Mauritius or go to other parts of the world. But if you think about it, what Jesus is saying here is, when you've got wealth, what do you do with it? Now, let's listen to the teaching of Jesus. Why is Jesus telling this man to guard against greed? One, greed makes you focus more on yourself and less on God. So the problem here is, listen to this man. He's thinking, okay, I've got grain, I've got money, I've got this. What must I do? So it's all about what must I do with what I have? Where am I going to keep what I have? Where am I going to store what I have? What am I going to do with what I have? So it's all about him. He focuses on himself, on what he has. So the problem with greed, Jesus, I mean, with wealth is that Jesus is saying, if you're greedy, you focus less on God and more on yourself. So therefore, it means all you think of is, I've got this, I did this for myself, the reason I've got what I have is because I am clever, it's because I've achieved, it's because I've done this and that. So what Jesus is saying is, this man, greed has made him to think less of God and more of himself. So therefore, what we need to always remember, what this teaches us is, what we have, whatever you have, is a blessing from God. So never forget that what we have has been given to us as a gift from God. Yes, we might have achieved it by working hard because there's, there's no way in the Bible where it says we must not work hard. You must work hard, but remember your achievement, your abundance, the things that you have in life is a gift from God. So Jesus here is reminding these people. And what is lovely about this parable is one man asked the question, but all the, everyone had to hear now or got to hear what it means to be greedy. So friends, my question then for you today, when was the last time you thank God for what you have? When was the last time you spent time, you sat down and said, you know what, my prayers for today, I'm not going to ask God for anything. Because remember, every time we pray, we ask God, we want God to give us this. But my question is, when was the last time you sat and said, you know what? In my prayer time today, I'm just going to thank God for what I have. And friends, being wealthy doesn't mean having money. But being wealthy means having the gift of life. When was the last time you say to God, God, I thank you that I breathe. God, I thank you that I have a husband or wife or children that still listen to me. God, I thank you that I've got health, that I'm healthy. Not that I'm comparing myself to anyone, but when I look at myself is that there are many people who died young, but I'm still at this age and healthy and going on and carrying on with life. When was the last time you gave thanks to God for your life? Friends, I'm not, because sometimes when we talk about wealth, we think about money, we think about earthly possession, but I think wealth means having life. Fact that we are breathing, that's wealth. Because friends, let me tell you, there are many people around the world that are suffocated. That for them, living is hell. They wish they could die any moment. But for us in South Africa, we are so fortunate that we are free. That we can worship God at any time. We can praise God at any time. And I know, friends, amongst us, there are those who have lost their loved ones. Amongst us, there are those who have lost their friends. Their children at a young age. Their grandchildren. Their great-grandchildren. But I want to say to you this morning, and I don't want to sound selfish, please bear with me. I want to say to you this morning, maybe Jesus is reminding us here today that yes, we've lost people in our lives. Yes, we are grieving. Yes, we are in pain. But have we ever stopped one moment to say, God, but I thank you that I'm still alive in spite of everything that I've lost. So Jesus is saying, let us not be greedy because we'll focus more on ourselves and less on God. And friends, I want to tell you this morning, 
I want to tell you this morning that we are rich in Christ. You know why? Because he died for us so that we may have eternal life. So being wealthy in Christ means is the fact that we know when we depart from this world, we're going straight to be united with our Lord and Savior. That's being wealthy. So friends, what Christ is saying here to this man and to the crowd is you are worried about all these things around you. You are worried about the inheritance that your brother will share with you. You are like the prodigal son who wanted the inheritance and, and went away and wasted it instead of being grateful for what God has given you. If I were to give people a chance to share a testimony, I'm sure there will be great things that you can share and say, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have A, B, C in my life. You know, every night when I switch off the lights, finishing praying with the kids, when I look at them, I always say, I thank God for these gifts. Because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have them in my life. Oh yes, they are stressful sometimes. That we're not, I'm not going to lie. I'm sure you know you've got children and, great, and grandchildren. I know they are stressful. But when they are sleeping, you're like, God, these are beautiful gifts. When they are awake, you're like, God, please. Take them away from me. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to express, friends. Being grateful. And secondly, Jesus is saying, greedy, being greedy makes you want more for yourself. But listen to this man. He's got something, but he's thinking, okay, now how do I get more? Because I already have something, but, but I'm not satisfied. So Jesus is saying, when you are greedy, you don't get satisfied. God will provide for you, you still want more. Do you know that prayer where you pray for something? Please, God, give me this. God gives you that. You're like, eh, God, could you add something more? So every time God gives you something, you want more. So he's saying when you're greedy, you want more for yourself and you think less for others, those around you. So in this instant, he's saying then to, this, to these people, instead of wanting more for yourself, just share with others. Instead of wanting more for yourself, just ask yourself, how can I get to know God more? So friends, let me tell you this. You can look around. I sometimes listen to my friends because when you go, for example, I, I, I researched on Google the richest people around the world, the wealthiest people around the world, and it will give you top 100. And you look at them and think, God, if you can just give me a piece of what they have. But you see, that's what the thing is. You get the piece of what they have, you're like, okay, what more can you give me? Because this is not enough. Look at them, they have more, and you just gave me the piece. I want more than this. You see? So the thing is, what Jesus is saying here is that you can never get more. <laughs> Sorry, you can never get enough. So guard against that because you can never get enough. So if then greed is a problem, what is the advice from Jesus? Jesus is advising him to be rich towards God. Listen to Jesus. So he shares the parable. He tells them all problem about greed and then he says, this is how it will be. Whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. So if you store things for yourself, you will lose them. But what you will never lose is eternal life. That's what being rich towards God is. So Jesus is saying, so Jesus is saying, instead of me typing the richest people in the world, I should type people that have eternal life because I will feature from those people. You see, so when you talk about those who've got eternal life, those who've got God in their lives, you don't have to worry about anyone because you know if there's top, if there's top 100 people that will go to heaven, you are on that list. And Jesus is saying, that's what we should concern ourselves with. So our priority should be being rich towards God. What does then Zole mean, being rich towards God? Being rich towards God means having a relationship with God. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It means enriching yourself in knowing God, making sure that you spend time with God. 
Making sure that you know who God is. Making sure that you have God in your life. Making sure that you're sharing the story of Jesus with other people. That's what being rich in Christ means. So friends, as we are about to go to communion, and when we leave this sanctuary, our priority should be being rich towards God. Our priority should be knowing that God has blessed us with everything that we have. Our priority should be gratitude. Our priority should be praising God for the gift of life. And I tell you today, if anyone ever comes to you and say you are poor, you must say, my minister says, I'm the richest person in the world. And when they ask you why, you say, because I've got Christ in my life. And friends, things can be taken away from you, but Christ will never be taken away from you. Because when you have Christ, you are rich. So this man, instead of worrying about inheritance, he should be asking Christ, how do I have a relationship with you? Not, please tell my brother to share. How do I have a relationship with you? Because that relationship with Christ will make us rich. And that relationship with Christ will take us to heaven. And that relationship with Christ will be inheritance for our children. Imagine dying knowing that your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren have a relationship with Christ. And because when you die knowing that they have a relationship with Christ, it means you'll be united with them in eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for making us wealthy. We thank you, God, for knowing that when we die, we're going to heaven because that's the gift you're going to give us. So, Father, bless us, prepare our hearts as we come to the time of communion. May this time of communion today be different because we'll be receiving the wealth of heaven. So bless us, Father. Guide us. Prepare our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.